Okay, hello there, and welcome to this training session of focusing a snappy X mesh. Okay, so we're going to address some tips, tricks, how to work in, with a snappy, but also, uh, if time permitting, I'm going to introduce you this tool, Dice Hood, and show you what, what you can do. So this training is based in OpenFontaine, by the way. So, but most of the thing I think it will work with OpenFontaine 11. The only thing that probably you have to be careful is where to put the geometry, but I think it's back compatible. So let's talk about a little bit. I think we're all familiar with the CFD workflow. So you start from the geometry, move to mesh and simulation, but these two steps, geometry and mesh, and they're linked together. So if you want good meshes, you need good geometries, okay? And if you want a good solution, you need a good mesh. But it's more important, do not neglect the geometry, okay? Work in the geometry, get good geometries, avoid dirty geometries. With OpenFun, it's difficult to avoid that because we're using those nasty STL files. I can criticize a lot of those files, but I'm not going into details. So the workflow of the simulation is something like that. And this is my personal experience, but I think everybody will, will agree more or less that most of the time you spend in the geometry and meshing stage. Okay, so personally speaking, I spend like 70 to 80 percent of my time there, and then you have solution and post processing. Post processing can be also <clears throat> time consuming, okay, but most of the time you spend it there. So when it comes to, to meshing in OpenFund, these are the tools that you have. We're going to focus our attention only in Snappy, okay, so I will just skip this. And let's talk about a little bit mesh quality assessment. Okay, so it's tricky you now, it's difficult to, to, to judge when you have a good mesh, but I think the best criterion is that it has to be uh, pleasant to the eye. When you look at the mesh, you need to have symmetry, good transition, you, you, you need to have you know, empty spaces and so on. So this mesh, be so to speak, is really nice. So this is your best test, your first test. And then you have some other criterions. For instance, also you can use you know, these classical mesh refinement studies. I'm not a big supporter as of today about this one because today we have computational power. So usually you can just go and fire a large mesh. This was something that you used uh, 20, 30 years ago where there was no much computational power available. But also it's very important that you should also focus in the physics and in or the, on the underlying physics. So we, we, are, we use a lot of models. The most important one is turbulence modeling and we can get a lot of information from there. So for instance, for turbulence modeling, we can get integral length scales and using this information, we can define another quantity that is based in the physics, but also in your mesh, mesh, which is called integral length scale. So usually a good standard practice is that if this value is less than five, it means that you need to add more cells there. As you see here in the wake where things are happening, the value is less than five. So the recommended practice is just to make it finer. Here you need to do it because nothing is happening. Okay. So this is how this quantity is computed, very important. Okay. This is an approximate metric that you should use with good engineering judgment, okay? But it's a very good guideline. Then also you have some other metrics, such as orthogonality, skewness, aspect ratio, and smoothness. I think we're all familiar with this. So I think let me skip a little bit with this one here, here, also. Well, just to mention that aspect ratio, usually we look at like this, but remember that also you have in the set direction. So that one also can influence your aspect ratio. Okay, and the growth rate is just the change in, in area or volume from a small to large cells or, or vice versa, as you want to see it, okay? Uh, this is also interesting because if you can align your cells with the flow, that also can help at reducing your, your, your simulation error, getting more accurate solution. And this just shows you that not excess or quad are the best cells, but in this case, if the flow is coming in this direction, yes, quads are very good, and triangle have this inherent error, but if the flow now is coming in this direction, okay, now these are the good cells and this one will have a lot of error. So there is no final cell. So this is where I want to come here. So it will be, it, it is up to you to test all the cells as today with open phone and many solvers, they are pretty much agnost agnostics of the cell type. They were well with all, but personally speaking, I really like polyhedron. Okay. They have very nice properties. They adapt very well to the geometry, like Tetra, also Tetra are perfect. They adapt very well to the geometry. However, usually you get very large meshes. Okay, and also they have the minimum number of faces. So that is not positive in the sense that usually grading computations are based 
influxes in the faces so this one you have less faces here you have more faces so it tends to be more accurate but it's up to you my religion is a poly polyhedral cells okay so when doing the mesh also uh the recommended practice also is to concentrate cells where 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 you are interested where the solution is changing okay so try to to reduce the cell number and not to waste cells so in this case see that we're interested in resolving this area so it's where we need to put more cells here far from the body larger cells okay then also you can mix all the cells not necessarily they all need to the pole to be poly or, or tetra or whatever you can have a mix there is no problem open phone it works with these cells with the hybrid meshes not every solver will work with that but open phone our case it, it works okay so let's move here talking about open phone these are the quality metrics that are hardwired in open phone by no means this means that is you have larger or smaller values that your mesh is bad okay this is just what the developers recommend okay so personally speaking, this is what I like to, to use. These are the values that I like to use. And if I have larger values, I know how to adjust my numerics. But if you have measures with these values, I think pretty much it's safe to use the default values for the numerics. Uh, well, I think we know what is check mesh, so I will move here. Just it will show you the quality of the mesh. And usually you focus in excuseness and non-orthogonality, OK? So as you see in this case, it's a little bit large. But that doesn't mean that the mesh is no good. You can use it, but be careful that that can 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 add some error in the solution. But as you know how to control the numerics, it's not a big deal. So in open form mesh generation, that's let me give you all introduction. We're going to focus only in, in the snappy. We block mesh. There is an appendix that you can see how to use it. But we use block mesh only to generate the background mesh. So let me move here. Now it's snap is snap is a fully 3D mesh that uses this octree me method now based in hexes. So if you want to have finer meshes, so split one X and eight. It's 3D. Okay. Sometimes you see some figure that is split in four because it's 2D, but actually fully 3D. Okay. Very important. It's fully 3D. And this is how it works. Okay, so you have a geometry that is an STL file or OBG, OBJ file. Okay, then you put this geometry inside a background mesh or a volume mesh. Okay, that mesh you need to fulfill some properties, and the most important is that it has to be it needs to be made out of of X's. Okay, so you have this these two, the mesh and the geometry. You put everything together inside the blender, which is snappy x mesh and then you get something like this okay so very important to mention that uh snappy is a volume to surface meshing tool first I start from the volume and then it slowly will refine the surface and this is not very flexible it works but it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility but it works okay i don't want to criticize a lot that okay so some examples what you can do some extra tools that you find in open phone honestly i don't use these tools and well, I'm not going to say anything about that. The case directory, okay? So this is open from 10 and open from 11. The only difference is that now the geometry image files are located in a default is called geometry. That probably makes more sense, call it geometry. Uh, so using block mesh to generate the background mesh. As I say, I'm not going to talk about that. I just use it to get, generate that background mesh that you use here that you put together with the STL. But important to stress is that you can use also external measures. Okay, not necessarily it needs to be with block mesh, but you need to fulfill these requirements when it comes to this block mesh that also doesn't need to be a square or a cavity. It can be circle, whatever you want. Okay, so this block mesh Next to be next to consists of purely excess. Also, in the cell ratio is recommended to have some approximately one, at least near the STL, and it must intersect the STL. So if you fulfill these requirements, it will work that that uh, that background mesh will work. Okay. So setting boundary conditions, I think I, I, I'm not going to say anything the, about this because it creates a lot of confusion. And I have to admit that in open phone, you have like a hundred boundary conditions. I don't know. So people get confused about that. So that is up to you. Read the standard documentation. What I want to say about that boundary condition is that when you do the mesh, you need to create the surfaces, the patches, the groups, or the name selections where you want to apply those boundary conditions. If you don't have those surfaces, that is a problem okay so in the tutorials i'm going to show you a few tricks but 
always at meshing time you need to define those surfaces so let me move here i don't have much to say here this is not our focus and now let's talk about mesh generation using OpenFun. so let's explore the dictionary a little bit what is happening so this is our workflow that I already visited so first you generate a background mesh you get an stl representing the geometry or multiple stl there is no problem getting that and it can be dirty stls this background mesh which is your volume it's going to evolve towards the surface to get something like this the block mesh can be generated the, the, the background mesh can be generated using block mesh or standard measures and in snappy where you blend everything you have many options that are going to give you a few guidelines but this is how it works okay so just revisiting these guidelines regarding the geometry also okay then also if you have chart angles you need to extract them using this utility that in the tutorial we're going to see that and then at the end of the day we get everything here okay so very important remember i have to stress this a lot is volume to surface snappy so basically you start with the background mesh and you have a characteristic cell site okay this is your characteristic cell site next to the surface so the refinement all the refinement in snappy in surfaces in edges in volume works in this way based on this characteristic cell size okay you use this relation and you can get the actual cell size in the surface the edge or the edge so for instance you choose a refinement level of two you're going to get an uh, edge size like this is, you know, this quantity that you know, this is two, and you get your estimate. So that is how it works at Snappy, okay? So as you can see, your mesh will grow really fast as you put here large numbers. So you said it's not a good practice to put more than five. It's better to use another trick that in the tutorial for you're going to see, but try to avoid very large values there because Snappy is very, it uses a lot of memory. So these texts are something like this, okay? You, you know your domain, you know your physics, you put your geometry inside, create your volume mesh, okay? You follow, now that you, you, you have those requirements, okay? You know your characteristic size, and now you can start to do all the refinement, the surface or edges. So see that you start by edges there, so you can see that the refinement here is two, okay? Then you go to the surface, the refinement level here is four, where you have more curvature here you add this region don't pay attention to this this is just to create buffers just to show you that you can select some regions like that then after you have that you remove start to remove cells and then you do the cell splitting in specified regions and volume refinement so see that now you have a volume refinement and also you have a cartesian mesh so you remove unnecessary cells that you have here according to some criterion and you get this cartesian mesh so at this point this mesh is a valid one but it is cartesian okay so for boundary layer it's not so good the next step is snapping so you made that cartesian mesh into a body fitted mesh so see the difference and this is a much better mesh than this and this is also a valid mesh you can do your simulation but if you are interested in the boundary layer you don't have it there so the final step is that now that you have this you add the boundary layer and this is it. This is the steps that you follow in a snappy X mesh. Everything can be controlled from this dictionary. We're going to see that. Very important to mention is that all the cell addition is done in the castellation step. Here in these steps, you do all the cell addition. When you move to a snapping, you are not adding any more cells. Everything has been done here. Probably your cell count is going to change by not much because you are swapping edges and probably when you swap edges the connectivity change so probably will change by a few cells okay but here you are not doing cell additions okay you're swapping and snapping sorry here swapping and snapping cells and here you are going to add cells but only in the boundary layer you are not modifying your your volume mesh okay so it's going to while you are doing this also snap is always checking the the quality and checking this quality it might do some changes swapping edges so on but all the cell addition is done here okay so this is how it works and let's see an animation here everything in action and see that continuously you are checking the quality then you go at the boundary layer sometime there and that's it this is how it works okay so this is our measure. So to illustrate you know, how things work, let's move to this tutorial that you have right now with the training material. But first, just to show you what you have 
the snappy XMX dictionary you know, can be divided in five sections. So you first you read the geometry, castellation, you define all the castellation, subdivision, and so on. Here is your body fitted mesh, and then you add the prismatic layer. While you are doing all these steps, you are always checking the mesh quality. Important that these steps are independent. You know? To do the final mesh, you need to do all of these steps. You can do first the castellation. If you are happy to be the castellation, you move to the snapping. If you are happy with this one, you move to this one. Okay, so you can restart solutions. And I strongly recommend to proceed in this way in the tutorials. So you're going to see how to do that. Uh, this dictionary can be very intimidated to read. Okay, so in the tutorials, you're going to see that I'm going to clean up things a little bit, but it can be very intimidating because there are many, many, many options. So last time I checked, there were more than 60 parameters. So people can get confused there. So here you have a few guidelines so later you can follow that okay better with the tutorials you're going to see but you have a few notes and so on that says that you have to be careful okay i'm giving also a few uh i call default parameters so i recommend you to use default parameters so but there are some notes here so see that these are my default parameters or recommend values if things are not working you can change to the improved values okay so you have the notes there so this is when it comes to, to snapping. The same will apply with, with boundary layers. You have these recommended values. Then if things are not working, use improved values. Okay, but do not use right ahead improved values because using improved values means that more time consuming, more memory, larger measures. So if things doesn't work with the recommended values, move to the improved values, okay? So this is this is what, what, what we have is this case. You have there you now explanation and then we are talking about boundary conditions and setting all the naming convention very important now use the right names and so on okay so we're going to work with this case in the guided tutorials uh sorry we went a little bit fast but as i say it's quite difficult to put meshing in, in one hour or, or less than a, one, a, one hour so usually i can be here one week talking about this so i think at this point let's move to the to the guided tutorials Okay, as I say, it's difficult to address meshing you know, in a few minutes, so it took almost half an hour to address all that basic theory. So now let's move to the practical part. So let me start first with uh, my working environment. I'm working with OpenFontaine and using a virtual machine, okay? So just to let you know, here is the data structure, the, the tutorials that we have. We have these four tutorials, and let's move to the first one, no? M101. Okay, so in this case, you have, in every case, sometimes you're going to find a readme file I recommend you to open. Sometimes I give some guidelines there. And then also you have these automatic scripts to run the case automatic, okay? So I'm going to run using these scripts, okay? So sometimes you have to run in serial, in parallel, but I'm going to use, okay, in this case, the serial one. And see that I'm reading this specific dictionary and doing these steps. Okay, so let me go here and let me open block mesh. Okay, then also the original dictionaries. Okay, this tree. Then also surface features. So this is the tool that we use to extract the feature edges. We're going to see that, and that's all. Okay, so. The first thing is that I always recommend meshing is a very visual process. Okay, you need to have a visual representation. Usually in OpenFont you don't have that because everything now is in text files. So I recommend you to work, you no, know, and let me go here to work to get a, a, that graphical representation. So I use this on shape, okay, to put everything there, get an idea, but also very important, get an idea how of the coordinates of the of the domain and so on. So this is the case that we're going to do. This is the geometry that we have. See that we have there that geometry there. And see that I also put in there the external domain and also the refinement box. And also I have that region where I also the adding some refinement. So I always work like that. I go I get my visual references and also here I can get an idea if I have a cell size of whatever one millimeter or one meter then I can get an idea how it will look like in my surface so I recommend you always to get these visual references okay so in this case okay we have everything let me now minimize here and okay so yeah I forgot to mention that also from here you can get the coordinates here see here that we have our coordinates 
So this is very, very useful when you are creating block mesh. So remember your first step is to do your, your mesh. So I get my coordinates, I create my block topology. So let's do the first step. So first I'm going to do everything by hand. Okay, so I have my mesh topology there. Now I can launch open phone and I only have my background mesh. Okay. This is here and let me put here wireframe and let me put there, let me change the color. Whoop. Let me put here. that so this is what we have okay there is no body inside so far we create just the block so this is the volume remember volume to mesh now if i add the geometry there let me open here and remember constant three surface and here we have the geometry so basically now you have a cell size that i think is 100 i don't recall what, what is the dimension and you can get an idea according to the refinement how it will, will look like. So this is what we're doing, okay? So I always like to get that visual reference. Okay, so now also the next important step, see here that we have chart angles. Those chart angles needs to be resolved. So that is done in this file surface features. So you read your geometry, you can read multiple geometries. You see here I'm putting multiple geometries and then you just need to define this angle. So it will use an angle, okay? to cut, to, to, to extract those edges, okay? So the rest, you can leave it as default. So again, this is difficult to, to, to visualize. So I recommend you to use Paraview or some other tools to get that those angles. So here in Paraview, there is this filter called extract edges. And here is where you define, oh, sorry, it's not that one. It's uh, filter edges, I think, here feature edges. Here you have the angle. So if you look here, you see 150. If you look here, you get, you get 30. So this angle is the complement of this one. Don't know why the developers did it. So if you put here 30, it will be equivalent to 150. So see how what happens is you put 30. This is what you are detecting. Okay, so if you put 30, you are detecting all those chart angles. Okay, so if you are happy with this, you can use this, or if you want to extract more, a lower value. So if I put 10 there, I extract all this. If you put 10 there, here will be 170. And if you put a larger value, less features that you capture. So if you put here 80, probably you're not going to capture much, or 110, you don't capture anything. Okay, so just this. So it's up to you. Okay, certain usage is a good value. So something important. I think I don't, I don't want to extend too much, but you can extra, extract these features in part of you. There are a few options. Also, you can manually select what you want to do, okay? So you have these buttons here, and you can do selection here, see that, and you can extract those specific features, okay? I don't want to go into detail, ha half in mind that you can do it. But when you do it here using this, this uh, text file, the utility in open phone, you are extracting everything. Okay, so you don't have much local control, but see that in part of you, you can have that local control. So we're going to proceed to do it here. So see that you extract everything, we know all the features. Okay, and the next step is moving to a snappy X mesh. Okay, we have background mesh, we have the features. Now let's look at the snappy. And let's look at the original snappy dictionary. So see that you have there, it's very intimidating. See that you have many keywords, comments, and can be very confusing. So here I have a clean dictionary. I separate everything by blocks and see that it's very easy to read you know, when you erase all those comments and organize everything. So here, remember the steps. So remember that you can do one step at a time. So I can put here false. Falls, I will do just the castellation, all the subdivision in one step, okay? And when I'm happy, I can move to the other step doing like this. Falls, true, okay? So that is the way how I recommend to do it. In this case, we're going to do everything in one single step. Then you read the geometry, okay? So here I can get access to the STL. STL, there is a lot to say. So here I'm, I'm accessing a specific region of the STL. I can create no primitive geometries inside inside a snappy. So this is the refinement box, or you can read another STL, and this is the sphere. Sphere. Then you have 
the auctions. Okay, so go to the slides to see those auctions. But here we move into features. Features are the edges. In these edges, you want to use the refinement level. And we know how to compute that refinement level. So if I put there a value of two, and you know your characteristic size of the background mesh of this one, you know what will be the size of that. Okay, so you have features, you can put multiple features there, and then you move to surfaces. Again, you have there the surface wolf, and you put global and locals. Okay, so if you have surfaces within your, your geometry, like in this case, uh, in the STL file, I'm not talking about this, but this is also can be a little bit tricky. This is probably a complicated one. You can add local refinement. So the second one represents curvature, okay? Where you have more curvature, put more cells, a refinement of four, okay? Then this is specific to that sphere. This is how you control the curvature. The smallest this value is, the more refinement you add due to curvature. So usually search is a good value. Then refinement region. So you are accessing this region that you created here and you add inside that one one, it split everything in one. It's just the volume, and this is a very important value, location in mesh. This is going to tell, this is a point that you are going to have in your domain, and it's going to tell where do you want the mesh. So let's see that this point is in 100, 0, 50. So let me add here a source, a sphere, 100, 0, 50. And uh, we need to increase the radius there. There you go. That point is there, probably too large, 10. So if I put that point outside the body, it's going to do external geometry. If you put that point inside the body, the geometry is going to be inside. So as you put it there, let's say in 10, see that is inside, and it's going to mesh inside the body. Try to avoid putting that point exactly in the surface. It's going to give you an error. I think it's very difficult to do it, but it might happen. It happened once to me, okay? So this is how it works, okay? So as you see, getting a clean dictionaries, okay, will help you a lot. Okay, so actually we're working in this case, I'm working with V2, okay, dictionary V2. Let me open this one because it's a dictionary that I don't have that baffle. I don't want to talk about that. So see, that's very clean. So see that in this case, I avoided this stuff of reading the STL file with patches. So see that it's very clean. This is the name of the STL geometry. Remember that it's always located. It's always located here. Three surface of geometry. This is exactly the same name. This is your primitive that you are creating for the box refinement default auction so go to the slides to see what what there are this is when you extract the edges using this utility surface features it's going to create that file automatically okay with that name and that file is located also here okay so you put it there then refinement surfaces so see here that you read this surface and you give this name you use exactly the same name here Refinement to four, second number represents curvature, is even one curvature to two, so it's up to you. This is the one that controls the curvature, so I recommend 30. The lower, the more refinement you add due to curvature. And then the rest, the fall auctions, this is the volume refinement, location in mesh. And that's all. As you see, it's very straightforward. Then the other option, so remember the other option is a snapping to make your mesh now body fit. So here I recommend you use the, the recommended values. If for some reason you don't get good results, try to increase it a little bit until you get better results. And then we go after that, the boundary layer. Okay, so in the boundary layer, you have also, I recommend you to use all these default parameters. So if you don't get good results, probably this is in very important or this one also is very important. Okay, these are the two that I recommend to change. but just try no uh, always restart from a previous solution so see here that you have different methods okay so relative sizes is a percentage in reference to the cell next to the body okay after snapping okay after snapping the cell size next to the body okay so you if you put true true is a percentage if you put false is the actual distance so here is you put true this value is 50 percent so the cell next to the to the surface next to be 50 percent if you put fast will be 0.5 meters okay so this is how it works okay then 
you add three layers and that's all very straightforward okay so let's generate this mesh just to show you okay let me clean out everything and i go run serial and it will t take some time okay so this is not a very time consuming case okay but always take some time remember that here we're doing everything one at a time but i recommend you to do uh, everything in one single single step but to do one at a time so to do that also you have to be careful that here in system okay you need to put uh uh restart from latest time okay and here for instance i'm doing the meshing and i have my delta t1 so all these steps are going to be saved in different folders like one two three because you put here one so you put here 0 0.01 it will be 0 0.01 two three whatever and each folder you have an instead and if you are happy with with what you have there just restart but you need to have here restart from latest time okay so in this case is okay so now it's checking mesh everything okay so we have everything so if i go here look at that you have one two three so let's say that I'm not happy with my boundary layer, okay? I want to restart from two. So what you need to do here is just go back here, disable this, and disable this because you already have it, and just do the boundary layer. So you erase this folder, okay? And it will restart from this one, okay? Easy peasy. So this is my advice, try to work like this. So that being said, let's visualize what we have here so let me open Paraphone. okay and sometimes there you have in part of you an estate let me open this one just to show uh okay so and see that this is what we have ignore that error so i'm putting a cock plane remember this is 3d let me go to the first step so this is the cartesian mesh okay so we have a cartesian mesh here this is a valid mesh, but boundary layer is problematic. Then you go to the next step, body fitted. Okay, so body fitted, you control everything here. This is not controlled. So if for some reason you are not happy with these results, just restart from that one. Okay, this is a very nice snapping. And then you move to the boundary layer. So see that boundary layer is just pushing away the mesh from the surface and then it's placing that prismatic layer there. So that is the problematic part in Snappy. So that's all, that was this basic tutorial. I hope you got an idea. So at this point, next, let's move to the next case. Okay, so now let's move to the next case in one cell. Okay, so here we'll go a little bit fast. Okay, this is quite easy case. So here also in the slides, we have all the steps. So you have it located there so basically this is what we want to do okay a cylinder there remember always i recommend you to have a visual reference so i always do that so in this case this is what we have we have the cylinder okay i created my cylinder here i can export that cylinder as an stl file i have my refinement box and my outer box i know my ref my coordinates there i can create everything okay so i have all my visual reference front on, on shape okay so always do that and in this case it's a very nice case because you could play around with different actions it's quite fast case so if you use feature edges this is what happens you use resolve those angles so if for you that is not important it's okay to use this one but most of the time will be important so this is the difference then the refinement region you can have it there okay how is control that edge refinement how do you capture so here you have a short explanation that the scenario what is happening there adding refinement boxes and so on okay so here you have an explanation many many options so play around feel free to play around with all those actions uh to stress that this is a very fast case okay so spend some time here trying to get a better feeling how to do things okay and at this point now uh, all the explanation also boundary layer and so on okay so very interesting case i recommend you to follow this okay read the description here here i talk also about restarting no so you can do restarting i always recommend you to do things step by step okay 
a little bit common in the STL files that so sometimes you can have an STL file subdivided in different surfaces. So when you open in Paraview and you see different colors, it means that you have different regions and you can use local refinement in those regions. So as you see, you can have more control in your meshes. So if you have a single color, it's the whole surface. But if you have different colors, you can assign in each of these colors different refinement levels, okay? That is a little bit tricky because, but here is explaining, you, know, you need to know how to access those patches and so on. So you have the, the explanation here. And then also we have how to do 2D cases. So remember, Snap is 3D, but to do a 2D case, you need to, to apply a trick. So you need to create a background mesh here that is smaller than the geometry. You are going to cut your geometry and then that will be, uh, let's say, a pseudo 3D mesh, okay? Because still you are going to have one cell or a few cells here when you are doing refinement. So after you do that, there is another utility called a strip mesh. And then that strip mesh basically is going to project this face into this one, and there you go. You have a, a 2D mesh, okay? So this is this, this, this case, so just to show you the workflow is pretty much the same. I will go to C3, which is the case that is also ready to run. So look at that, you go block mesh, you create your block topology. So see that this coordinates, you can get then easily from your geometry. You have your cell size, so usually I use this also, this is scripting, so I know that I will have a characteristic cell size that I think is 0 0.5, uh, my delta X 0 0.5, and so on, okay? And the name of the patches and everything, okay? Let me close everything that is becoming a little bit messy. Then the other step after that is, remember, surface features, if you have those. In this case, we have read your STL file that is always located in constant uh, tree surface or geometry in Open 4.11. Apply this angle, the recommended one, 150, larger, the more features you extract, and then go here, and you have a snappy X mesh. So see that we do everything one single step, read the geometry, okay? In this geometry, we have access to regions in the STL, okay? So see that you can access those regions like this, and the rest is pretty much the same, okay? all the auctions. Uh, just to mention that the mesh quality parameters, you have it there in an external file. So see what, while you are doing the, the mesh, OpenFrame is going to, to, to enforce these mesh quality parameters, okay? So usually it's a good choice. You want, you can increase it a little bit more, or if you want, you can disable them entirely, okay? So if you put like this, they are disabled. Sometimes it's a good, it's good. Sometimes it's bad. It's up to you. Okay. Later we're going to see an example. And just to mention something about the geometry, and let me let me open the the STL that I have here. Okay. And let me put here. So see that is you go into the STL, and when you open an STL, see that you have this keyword there, solid. If you look for that keyword, so see that you have so, solid patch zero. If you look for the other entry. It ends here, but now you have another one. This is the name of that region. Okay, so it's when you open an STL and you see that you have those regions, those, those, those keywords, and you have different keywords there, that is the name of each region that you can access in Snappy, and then you can apply local refinement and so on. Okay, so see that this is the name, and then you can rename it. Usually, just you can put the same name here and make it a little bit more complicated. Okay, so as you can see, this file is a triangulation that you can manipulate by hand. Okay, so it's up to you, but this is what, what is happening. So let me open that file. Let me go here. Okay, so this in one seal. then C3, okay, and if I launch here, part of you, and if I open the geometry, let me go here, constant three surface, see that, you're going to see that I, we have different colors. Each color represents a different surface, okay, and then you can apply that refinement there. Instead, when you have a single surface, everything will be a single color, probably, probably, let me see, in jail, I think, I have a uh, ba -ba 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 jail, let me see, probably that one. Okay, so see that that one, it is a single surface. And then probably all, 
Okay. So that is the difference. Okay. So to run the case exactly the same way, so you can do your mesh. This this is super fast. So I recommend you to play around with this case. And after you have the mesh, set up everything, and you can run the the simulation. So see here that I'm using this utility just to start to change names in the patches, just to make your simulation just to run. Okay. So by default, everything will create will be created like walls that you put in. in in the block mesh dictionary but then you need to do some renaming so here is automatically you can do it manually as well it's up to you and after you have that you can run your solver okay and just to mention that as well so you go here poly mesh this file is very important so see that here you have all the let's say topological information so see that this is a symmetry 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 then you're going to have a patch called inlet which is a patch an outlet called patch and then here you can put any of the boundary conditions available in open fund and see that you access all the other patches there and so on okay so this is very important okay so usually here you can change this 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 do not change it you can change it but you need to know the data structure okay but be careful about that and to visualize this open part of phone and there you go you have your case with your patches so disable the inlet okay then you cannot enable this one the lateral walls the slit walls you can disable the outlet the outlet there you go and see that in the cylinder it is split in three different surfaces so you have a lot of control there okay so that is one advantage in STL that you can do that that's it's not advantage okay you can do it in STL if you have a proper cat also you can do it it's even better okay so this is the case i recommend you to work it out very easy case okay I spend some time here play around with these different options okay and in particular play around with this restarting one two three in this case by the way it's running automatically and i don't have the intermediate ste a, 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 a steps because here in mesh Okay, and running with this option, override. If you use the option override, you are not going to get the intermediate steps because everything is going to be copied automatically here in constant polymesh. But if you raise that option override, you are going to get your intermediate steps. And that is the way I recommend you. If you are a beginner, I recommend you to go and work in that way. So let me do it here. So I change that keyboard there. So. And actually, let me give you no intermediate steps. Actually, let me stop here also. Intermediate steps. Okay, this is no intermediate steps. Intermediate. So let me give you this one updated. And as you run, you're going to save the folders one, two, three. Okay, so let me go here. System control did. Okay, so see that in this case, remember always is you are going to restart, put latest time. Okay, saving folders one, two, three because you have that delta t there. Okay, and Okay, I'm maybe working in the okay for clean tutorial as uh, mesh. Ah, uh, okay, my mistake there. Okay, so everything working fine. And if you get the folder, see that here you have one, two, three. Okay, you can check, for instance, you are not happy with this, erase the boundary layer. Remember that you go into a snappy, okay. So here, this snappy thing I clean up, so it's not intimidating. You put here false, false, and then just focus in this entry here and um, change those values remember to put here latest time and that's all okay so 
I think this is all for this case, so feel free to, pay, to play with all, all options. So I'll focus in C3, okay, this one and just the first steps. And in C4 you have the, the, the 2D case, okay, we're better going to do that in, in another case, but you have it there also, okay, so here you have the steps. So that's all for this case, let's move to the next one. Okay, our ne next case is a mix enable. So the previous cases, including the, the M101, were, they were external dynamics. Now let's move to internal flows. Okay, so we have this pipe and we want to simulate what is inside. So you can imagine here, the only difference, it is exactly the same word for us previously, but when we're creating the background and putting the geometry inside, we put that point inside the mesh and that's all. We have the flow inside and the rest everything applies exactly the same. So here you have another few guidelines, okay, to do some other type of refinement, also how to run in parallel, okay, so you can run in parallel with no problem. It scales also very well in parallel, so feel free to run in parallel, you will have the dictionaries there, how to run and so on, okay, nothing changed, okay. But what is important also here, again, we talk about naming those STL files and how you access that information in the STLs and how to add local refinement in the boundary layer and so on, that can be a little bit tricky. So you have all explained here, so read it careful and try to reproduce the same results. Uh, at the beginning of the introduction, I mentioned that it's very important to create those groups to assign boundary conditions or the naming selection or the patches. But sometimes it might happen that you forget that. So open for you have this utility auto patch that is going to divide your geometry in different patches, okay? So you have here an angle similar to the one to the surface features, but here the smaller the value, the more patches you capture. So. A little, can be a little bit confusing in one place you have it la la larger values more here smaller values more okay be careful about that so you use this when it will split patches it will assign this name automatically and then you can do renaming okay but my advice always try to get those patches from your geometry or from a block mesh okay but in case that you cannot do it you have the option there okay we have been talking about that restarting your solution this is how i recommend you and do things a step one step at a time and this option that you have here just to mention will do everything in the global mesh in the whole domain it will split use in this angle but also you can do things locally if you have access to your proper cat you can save those singular uh, utilities and uh, uh, surfaces, sorry, and you can use this utility surface to patch and using this utility automatically it's going to patch that to that surface. Okay, so you have, imagine that you have a single patch in, in your final mesh, okay, you forgot to select by everything, okay, and you want to have some extra control different from the one that you have here because you have your cat geometry. So simply save your STL files not necessarily needs to be the same geometry. You can just select and a small patch here and it will work. So see here that you read this using this utility and then automatically you patch everything. So this is the way I like to work if I forget to split my, my geometry, if I forgot to split my geometry, now to do the mesh. Okay, so feel free to, pay, to play around with this case. Yeah, I'm just going to show you the basic case a structure so in two so because here let me go bam 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 mix an elbow okay and you have here you can run also the solvers you open the, the file there you have many scripts okay so you have another director here where you have many scripts okay so see that we're using this particular you can play you can see now by reading the name of the script what what is happening now you have single surface the surface to patch that what is playing at the end in this case we have run mesh multiple surfaces all this one so basically what we're doing exactly the same steps block mesh surface features to run in parallel, run and snap in parallel. See that we have overwrite, so we're not saving intermediate steps, but it's up to you. Check mesh, reconstruct, okay? And then here just naming some patches, okay? To change the name and that's all, okay? And then another utility to modify the mesh, okay? So what is important, 
steps exactly the same as previously so see that you block mesh you create your outer box then you have surface features okay you read your snappy this one and let me use this one you read your stl apply the angle and then the steps here okay so see that in this case we don't generate the boundary layer then you check that everything is okay and then you move and can generate the boundary layer so let's run this case just to show you okay the first thing is that look at that what is happening here block mesh and let me run just block mesh So we have our background mesh and just to stress something very important and uh, let me change the color here uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. let me put this one black okay so this is our background mesh and inside we put our geometry so i put this okay let me put just to show you that we have also the geometry split in regions see that have different colors so we have access to those regions so see that what we're doing here you create your external box but do not put the, your box for instance in this case perfectly matching this geometry because it might happen that it can cut that geometry so your domain will be smaller will give you problems now so make it a little bit larger okay so see that here put it a little bit bar larger something's also important to mention so see here that creating this background mesh all these cells is a waste of cells this is using memory and if you want to do very large meshes it might happen that in a region like this you can have 10 20 million cells and a snappy and block mesh are very very memory consuming so you can modify you know your block mesh just to create you know the l here or you can use an external tool but be careful about that huh? that sometimes you can have regions that you are wasting cells and that will slow down your computation so as you can avoid those regions do it and this is what it happens okay so then when you create the location in mesh that you're going to put your point there and then a sphere that point that you put have to be inside the geometry you now so in this case and let me go i don't recall snappy x mesh so the point, remember that you define that in here, 2050. So if you put here 05. Okay, and let me add some transparency there. There you go. The point is inside, you do the mesh inside. So you put the point outside, you're going to do it outside. So that is how it works. Okay, so let's run this case. Okay, so probably okay it's going to run in parallel okay but it's a little bit slow okay even if the mesh is not super fine you will see that it's a little bit slow not talking about those cells that you are w wasting outside the domain and so on everything have an influence okay so if you can avoid that uh, please do so okay so here we have everything is done the case run in parallel so see that you have everything works exactly the same and now that we have the mesh you can visualize and there you go okay a perfect very nice mesh well it could be way much better but there you go this is how you create internal mesh and i think at this point we have covered it many many auctions again i went a little bit fast it's quite difficult in one hour to squeeze everything but Feel free just to revisit all the steps and everything. So with this, I think I'm done with this case. Let's move to something a little bit more advanced. Okay, let's move to the next case. So there is a lot happening here. The case is 2D, okay, but that doesn't mean it is useless. Okay, there is a lot happening here, and I think I can make more than one, one hour just in this case. So sorry if I go a little bit fast here. So basically what we're going to do here, and we're going to address the main problem in, in, in a snappy X mesh, which is boundary layer, okay? So this is the geometry we have. We're going to work in 2D. Okay, so remember to do in 2D, a snappy is, is fully 3D. So then there is an extra utility that you do a strip mesh, and basically you project this mesh in the other side, and then you have one single cell here, okay? When you mesh normally in, in snappy, see that here you have refinement also here, span-wise. 
instead here you don't have okay so basically that's what what we're doing so to do this one you create your your 3d geometry and then you just cut it with the box and that's all okay so that is the only thing and then create use this truth mesh the name of the patches and there you go you have your your mesh okay so that is the only thing different in this case now let's talk about here how to control you know that boundary layer that always give problems and let me move here you know in these images that you have the collapsing here and so on so as i say i can be one hour here two hours just in these four figures so the main problem here is related to the refining close to the surface and now you get an idea wh why i stress a lot that a snap is volume to surface so see that you are starting from this volume and then you need to refine the surface. So you need to add that control and can be tricky to add that stretching. So these meshes, all of them have the same number of X's, even if they are stretches, except for these two now, but these two have the same number. But this one will resolve better the airfoil because you have a smaller cells. Basically that is the idea. But we know that this block mesh, the, how it works is you double your, your cell count, it will incredibly increase your, your cell dimension, you know, the make it smaller, it will increase, it will double your cell count. It will increase it by a lot. So the idea is you can do this stretching, but if you have multiple bodies, it's difficult to control. So basically what you need to create is this local refinement like this. So you have the airfoil here, you put it here or put it here. Okay, so see that I will show you a trick how to do this stuff. Okay, a little bit more complicated, but this is the way I work. Okay, where I put the, the, the body, I put a smaller cells and we know from the theory that this, this is my background mesh and the cell size will depend on this small cell size. Not in this one, like in this case, it's now much smaller. So I will have better control and this is what is happening. So see that for the same refinement level that is two, okay, see that this is what you get in this case. But now here, this is what you get when you put a smaller cells. So that is the, let's say the final trick, try to get smaller regions there around the body okay so see that you resolve all the problems by doing that and also you resolve this problem here okay when you have this collapsing that is related to mesh quality okay so see that you resolve the problem there and that's all this is my final trick that i can recommend you okay so let's see how i do this this stuff okay so let's go to this case so it's entry okay you have different cases there is you go back here we're going to, i'm going to focus just in entry okay so in one and two this is a standard one and two with a stretching this is an interesting one so how we can create that region this way there are many ways to create it i think i will show you the, the easiest way how to do that so everything works in the same way okay remember that now we have this 2d mesh and you have this new dictionary extra mesh here so you do the extrusion of this face in the in the other face using the thickness. I recommend you to use thickness one when you are working to the to normalize coefficients. Now everything is done by unit depth, so be careful about that. But it's up to you. Okay, then you have your block mesh. Okay, then you have your snappy X mesh. Okay, and then also here you have how to do this so see that in this case we're using this refinement mesh dictionary so this is how to do that that refinement okay it can be a little bit tricky how you control in different directions okay you have it there so first just to show you we are in entry block mesh and as usual let me open there block mesh so you create the mesh and even if this mesh is is, is is 2d one cell in that direction remember when you do the splitting it is going to add cells in in the other direction so let me go here and what you need to do is that put the geometry there it's going to cut it there but then that 3d mesh you're going to correct it or convert it into the in this dictionary okay so you have this step here Okay, room mesh, all oh, double set. Okay, here is here, it's true mesh. Okay, so 
now let's talk about block mesh so see that what we have this block mesh here okay we don't have that refinement region so see we create block mesh then we use top set to select top set will select a region in the mesh and then in that region that we select in the mesh okay top set will do topological selection so see that these are the, the regions that you are selecting or I am selecting a cell set with these dimensions and this name. So I have these three regions, C1, C2, C2 and C3. Okay, so what I'm doing there, okay, you run top of set and now you can apply the refinement to that specific region. So see that you have there and you're using this dictionary refinement C2. So see that you are accessing this set applying refinement in these directions and the refinement is just a, 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 a splitting okay a single splitting you can do multiple to add more refinements levels okay and let me go and open now and see that you refine that region okay and then we have another level if I, I read my dictionary there another top of set okay so i have another refinement and then a smaller region okay i already computed i need to apply refinement mesh c3 so it will be a second refinement okay and let me open part of them okay and this is what i have see that you apply your refinement there Okay, I think that is a visualization problem. Let me go here, disable. Okay, you have that strange behavior, it shouldn't be there. Let me go here. Okay, so basically the idea here is that you refine and then you put your mesh there. So I think let me go here and let me run this one because I think I'm missing something. Let me put all these steps. So probably this might be an update or something that I'm missing that I need to update. Okay, so I have everything and put here. Okay, I don't know what was the problem. So see that previously was a problem. So remember what I told you, whatever you have your geometry, it has to be excess. So in the previous case somewhere, there were some triangles there. So here, if you put this geometry here, it's going to give you a problem because it's not an excess. So this is how it works. It's not, be, it will all open, for, it will split an exa into eight excess. Okay, it's very easy, you know, from the, from the implementation point of view, but it's not very practical as you have tetra poly, you cannot do the same stuff. You need to redo that, that mesh. And then that when you do this mesh, it will also add cells in this pan wise in this, in the third direction. Then you use a strip mesh to project this face into the other and that's all. Okay. So this is the trick that I recommend you. Okay. Get your block mesh with better refinement around the body. So if you are using block mesh, you can do it in this way. If you have an external tool, I'm a hundred percent sure that it's a way much easier. Okay. Because you have the GUI and so on. So let's run this case. Run mesh all. Okay. And you have all the steps there. Okay. So the third, the, the, the final solution here, now just, you have three folders and one in two with in one the standard one extraction using the refined mesh this one is a little bit tricky okay probably I'm not going to explain your problems you can go there and you can read the, the this one this is using a snappy x mesh okay to create that refinement so remember that a snappy if you don't read an input geometry basically you can do the volume refinement so this is what we're doing in snappy you don't read the geometry and assign your volume refinement okay so it's way much easier than the previous one and it gives you more flexibility because this one it, it will be just some specific selections okay in with the snap it's way much easier but then there are some file manipulation that i don't want to to address but if you read the files you are going to follow their these steps okay so now we move here, Paraphone, that we have the mesh. And there you go. Okay. Everything perfect. And see that 
by using a refinement uh, a finer mesh the same level of two refinement level of two it will give me a way much finer mesh it's going to resolve better this one so in this original mesh using two give me it give me this result if i want to use something similar to this one i need to use a refinement level of four and that it starts to use a lot of memory is very slow okay so you need to be smart you need to know how to do things okay and look at that oh, also you have a very nice boundary layer you don't have the problem here there's a boundary layer collapsing by just having much better uh meshes around the body you now for the background mesh want to point out also that here uh check mesh mesh quality controls okay okay i have it there but sometimes it gives you problems no the the trailing edge so you can decide disable that but in this case work fine okay so this is it okay and to stress also see that you have a problem with excuses but this is not bad four five is okay okay honestly excuses up to 16 20 is not a problem critical is you have 90 degrees in orthogonality that's critical okay so i think I covered this case as you see very interesting case I didn't show you many stuff because in this case also when I do a proper training we spend a lot of time here to show you how to control boundary layer but the main trick is this one get better regions around the body so okay let's move to the last case the final one okay so now let's move to the final case Okay, so here just going just to mention something. I'm not going to do it. You have it there fully working. So this is just to show you know an external case a, a little bit more complex geometry, but just to point out the idea of a snappy X mesh. It is what is called a, a, a fault tolerant meshing tool. That is, it, it can work with dirty and complex geometry. But this is a keyword: dirty geometries. That you should avoid dirty geometries. You have you need to have clean geometry so in this case what, what what we have a dirty geometry see that is a self intersecting we don't have a single body since an intersecting so you go to a topology topology based meshing tool it's going to give you problems you need to solve the, here, that here instead snappy even if you have holes it can cover that okay but you should avoid at all costs that and this is what i mentioned at the beginning also that i think it's becoming a standard practice people working with stls because they're using a lot of open phone and they're forgetting for, forgetting that behind the mesh you have the geometry okay so you need to have a good a good geometry in order to have a good mesh to mention also i always like to to have my geometry, my visual reference. So again, this case, like in the previous one, I also have that visual reference. But if I go here, okay, so we have here you now the aircraft and see that, and let me go here and this is stuff. And see here that each color represents a different entity, okay? It's a dirty geometry. It is self-intersecting in the sense that this is penetrating, but the triangulation it's not being recomputed here and this is a problem this is very dirty geometry this is really bad geometry this is something that you shouldn't do but kind of it is tolerant to this okay it's snappy let me go here and add some transparency and see that you have it there you have loosened surfaces you have holes in the geometry so it's very tolerant to this okay but avoid these geometries please so to end here, so the idea here is first, this advice, get good geometries, but snap is fault tolerant, okay? And you go to commercial software, commercial software, they always sell you topology based, but also they have that option, but it's always should avoid that. And the other advice, very important, and I have, have seen this very often, it is people getting problems with the boundary layer, like we saw previously, and they don't add it Okay, because it's horrible so they save that step and they get a solution and when you you don't add that boundary layer and in this particular case look at what you have see that this is third step behavior so that is because you don't have that very nice prismatic layer next to the body that is normal to the to the face so you have this problem interpolating not when the cells collapse you know you probably have seen some cells 
collapsing in the surface and you have this problem this is not only in this, in open phone you will have this problem in any cfd solver okay you use star system and fluency effects you will see this problem so please avoid this standard practice now this is the lazy approach because i cannot generate my boundary layer i don't put it okay and you get a solution but this these problems here this is stair step behavior can add 10%, 50% of error, and even can make your solution diverge. Okay, so avoid this problem, and my advice is to, if you cannot add five, 10, 20 layers, and I know it is tricky, and I didn't have time to cover now the, those tricks, uh, I recommend you to add at least one prismatic layer. Okay, one prismatic layer, I'm like 99% sure that it always works or almost always works. So at least at that prismatic layer and see that this is different. No prismatic layer, you have the cells collapsing here, prismatic layers, one single, and you reduce that problem. Even though that you are not resolving your boundary layer, but you are reducing your error. And likely also your Y plus, see that my Y plus is more contained. In this case, see that you have those jumps. So that is my final advice. Don't take the lazy approach, this one. Please add at least one boundary layer and please also use good geometries. And just to show you, you know, that uh, we move to M4. No, it's not M4, it's here. M4, this one says that. And there we, we, we have already the case. I'm not going to, it's also ready to run. And I like this case also because here I have you now this challenge. Okay, so I ask you to generate the mesh and I'm giving you a lot of margin of error. So when you run your simulation, your leaf and drag should be contained within these values. And you will see that if you use the lazy approach, you're going to be outside this one. When you use at least one boundary layer, you will see that you, you, you fall be, within those values, okay? So here I give you a few guidelines how to do things. But uh, let's run first, and just to show you, probably I no, I don't have the figures there. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, run mesh, yeah, okay. So this one will be, okay, run mesh. Okay, so here I have, this two is the conversion, already have the mesh, so it's going to convert. So just to show you, uh, just run mesh, convert, no BL, no boundary layer. So it's going to convert the mesh, so I save it. I did it in, in, in open phone, then I save it in, in fluent format and to, to do the reconversion. Okay, so let's open part of them. So the first thing is to show you. Let me let's look at the surface. So just at this says now. Okay, and as you put the mesh there, you will see that. Look at this. If you look at the figure look here, see this is stair step behavior. It's precisely all this stuff that you have there. You have there, the, the cells are collapsing there now due to the algorithm and everything. And this is a snapping stage. This is really difficult to control to get something uniform. And that is going to add some error. So you can control that. The best way is, please, the mesh. Try to improve the mesh, but also the numerics you can control. But you know that the numerics is also, you still have some error there so it's better to do all numerics plus mesh and let me load and state i think i have it there and let me put this one which i think it will show me the boundary layer okay i took the wrong one oh, let me reopen there low state part of you this one select this choose the file this is this one okay no load state uh, probably state one uh, this one 
Okay, for some reason I don't see. Okay, for some reason I don't see, but let, let's put here and let me add a cut plane here, here. That should be here. Okay, put it here, hi right there. So see that we have everything nice snappy mesh but see that in this case we are not adding now that boundary layer and let me put this size so see here this is the problem that i mentioned that you want to have those cells so you want to have every single cell or edge normal or perpendicular to the wall but in this case, look at that, you have this collapse. And so here, this is the problem that stair step behavior, the interpolation is not very nice interpolation, okay? So this is what, what happens when you take this lazy approach because you don't manage to get something working, don't add boundary layer at all. So see that all the way you have it there. So here it works fine, but here you have that problem, okay? Instead, let's go for the next one. BL, so let's compare that. Okay, so we have the mesh. And let's put exactly the same cut plane with this one here. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Let me put this the crinkle side, and then I assume so. Here is exactly the same, but the only difference that I added one prismatic layer. And see that there you go. See that when you add that prismatic layer, as I say, is almost always work. Okay, and this is the idea. See that now every single prismatic layer is. You have this edge or this face is perpendicular. You don't have any more that collapses. So previously you have this collapsing here and that is a problem, but see that now you move it and then perfect problem solve a better interpolation. So remember the finite volume method is about interpolating things. So if from where, where you are interpolating is not good, you are going to carry on a lot of error. So here you have some problems there, but you are solving a lot. Okay, so that is my final ultimate advice. Do not take this approach, please. At least that one boundary layer. That most of the time, it always work. Okay, so there you have the case fully working. Play around with this one. You have all the dictionaries. You can see what I'm doing, but same step. So you have block mesh. I know my coordinates. Then surface features, extract the features. And then in this case, I do the, the geometry, no boundary layer. When I happy with the snapping, I go and do this one. So see that in this case, fault false, and I focus just in the boundary layer. And in this case, I have just true true, no boundary layer. So if you check also the machine in the scripts. Okay, so first be careful that you go with this one, you use this one, or you can run in parallel also. To, to create the boundary layer or you can you or you can read the other one so this is the one for boundary layer this is the one for the for the mesh so you use this one to create your normal mesh with no boundary layer and then you run the second one to add the boundary layer okay so I think I'm done with this Okay, so I will give you also a brief introduction to Daiso, but we don't have time to show you, but I will give you a reference also. There, there is some, some, some playlist on YouTube you can follow. So let's see what is Daiso now. Bye. So in this few minutes that we have left, let's see what is Daiso. Here you have the link. Also in the video description, you have a few links, including this one. So basically it's a, it's a GUI, a web-based GUI 
okay, to set up open phone cases. And not only all open phone, but you can do many things. You have fully collaboration, so you can register here. Okay, so I highly recommend you can make your workflows more, way much easier. So I will show you this using the classical node. Look at that on shape, you have the geometry, but it wouldn't be great to have something similar to set up cases. So this is the idea of high hill. You have something similar to Unshape, but you can set your cases there. So just to give you an idea, here I open it, my workflow, I already registered it. And just to show you, let me go here. And you can come here, create your cases. Okay, you access everything. You can do the mesh, you can do the simulation. You have many templates. So basically you have open phone access with pet templates templates and for some things we have done some some modifications okay so let's say that open this case the mesh and just to show you the workflow for the mesh exactly what we have seen you know in in an open for using the common line interface you can do it here so you can rig the geometry and be careful that you can also access and pay attention. Now you can access step files, IGs, and so on, proper cat files. And when you access this one, you can access those patches. And you just by clicking in the face, you can select everything. You don't have that same problem that we have with the STLs that you need to do this subdivision. So you can re read your geometry. You have your background mesh. You can create your background mesh. You can fix it automatically, you not know, to a one dimension. And just to show you. You can make it smaller, be, make it smaller, larger, so it's up to you. Okay, very easy. You can give names to the boundaries if you want to add boundary layers at this stage. Remember, this is the background mesh, but you can add it here in the ground and so on. After you have that, you can define your material point. Okay, so you have it there. And just, you can do it visually, put it there, outside, then edge refinement, you can capture all the edges. So you can do it visually here, okay? Or you can use the same option as feature edges and so on. So you can extract that. I'm not going into details. There are some, some videos that you can do it. Here you can assign the refinement levels, okay? So you have access to that. Okay, so it's up to you, put it there. Then you go bottom refinement, you can define. So see that we have a box there and you can change it, okay? and so on. Then boundary layers, you can select where do you want boundary layers. And here we put also some, some tricks to get boundary layers, okay. Cell zones is unique cell, cell zones. And then just run. And this will deploy everything automatically on the cloud. So you're going to run in on Amazon. Choose your machines, okay. And that's it. And when you are done with that, you can move, okay, to the simulation stage. And then the simulation stage, okay, and let me go choose next template, okay, and let's say that I want incompressible flow. You have the mesh there, a nice mesh. You move to the next step. It will import that mesh. And then here you can set, the, set up your case. So you have your patches and so on. So this, I think it can make, especially for the beginners, very easy your workflow, but also for collaboration is there are many people working in the same project. Everybody who can put their hands there. Okay. It's not a single person. So this is fully collaboration. So you have 10 users. You can see everybody there and everybody can, can modify something. So I find it very handy, similar to what is done in Unshape. So I have, n I don't have enough time to explain that one, but in the description, you have this video to show how to to use this tool with this case, all the steps and so on. So I invite you to test it, give your feedback, okay? And hopefully I think you will enjoy this, this tool. So I think with this, I end. Thanks for your attention. I hope to see you around the world sometime this year, the next year or whenever. Bye.